district attorneys have the power to choose when charges are filed against someone who is accused of a crime. Uh, the office has the option to prosecute or to divert those accused of a crime to a program or dismiss cases altogether. KOCO's Alejandro Briones sat down with the two candidates running for the DA's office in Oklahoma County. Some issues they agree on, others not so much. Tell me about what you think is the most important task of a district attorney. Balance and good judgment. The district attorney makes all charging decisions for the county, all sentencing recommendations in the county. Public safety. And so really what you are as the district attorney is the catalyst or the driver for public safety in the community. For 15 years, District Attorney David Prater has been making those decisions, serving as the face of many major cases in our area. Now, two experienced lawmakers want to replace him. Democrat Vicki Behenna served as a prosecutor in the U.S. Attorney's Office for more than 25 years and now works as a defense attorney. When David Prater decided not to run and I started looking around at the people who were running for office, in particular my opponent, um, and realized that I was the only one running that had this incredible 360 degree view of the criminal legal system. Kevin Calvey served as a senior prosecutor in the Army. He spent time as an Oklahoma state rep and is currently a county commissioner. This job is an administrative job. Uh, the actual DA doesn't prosecute very many cases himself because your best use of time is getting the funds for the office, uh, negotiating policy with other stakeholders, and for that, I'm the only candidate that's qualified uh, for this race. In one-on-one -on -one interviews, we asked Calvi and Behenna where they stand and how they would address a variety of issues. One of those, corruption, which is a concern for voters. As DA, how would you help restore that trust in the office? Sure, so where corruption exists, uh, you know, you prosecute it and, um, you know, regardless of party. Having the public's confidence that crimes are going to be investigated and that there is going to be a fair resolution of those cases. So both candidates have different views on the state's abortion ban. Bahena calls the ban a government overreach. Calvi is pro-life, but both candidates share a stance on their role as DA if elected. No, I don't intend to prosecute. Uh, any woman for seeking an abortion out of state or otherwise or anybody who helps somebody go out of state. Uh, the practical upshot of these laws, I am pro-life, uh, the practical upshot of these laws, though, is that abortion is still legal a little over two hours away in Wichita. And what somebody does in another state is a matter for that state's laws, not our laws. Knowing that public safety is first and foremost, prosecutorial resources will go first to ensuring that people who murder, who drug traffic, who do human trafficking in Oklahoma County, prosecutorial resources will be put to that first. Everything else will be a very low prosecutorial priority. I do want to ask you your stance on the death penalty, um, where you stand on that, and what kind of cases you think warrant that kind of um, punishment and sentencing. Yeah, you know, um, it is a serious penalty. I think it should be used in the most heinous of crimes. Oklahoma City bombing is a perfect example of that. Uh, I think it should be used sparingly, um, only after consideration of the evidence against the individual. I do think the death penalty is appropriate in some circumstances, uh, certainly cop killers, terrorists, things like that, um, but I also think it can be overused. And so I don't plan at all to expand the death penalty. In fact, I would hope to use it less often even than it is now. If elected, Calvi has said he would drop charges against the five officers charged in the shooting death of Stavion Rodriguez, a 15-year-old armed robbery suspect in 2020. But Henna says, without having looked at all the evidence in fact, Calvi's statement is unethical. Is that still um, the plan for you if elected into office? And what is your response to the criticism? So absolutely, I will dismiss the charges against those officers. That's a clear-cut case of self-defense. I support the police, my opponent does not, because in this case, there's no way you can prove that case beyond reasonable doubt. The police department already investigated and found that it was a justifiable use of force. And what I told the FOP is that if police officers abide by their training and they use reasonable force with force, they will have no problems with the district attorney's office. If elected into office, what are the values that you're going to be bringing into the courtroom? Goodness, look. It is confidence and faith in the criminal legal system, first and foremost. Uh, integrity is right up there at the top. 
And as I said, fairness has to be right up there at the top as well. I would say, number one, uh, the focus has got to be on, on public safety uh, and fighting corruption. And so we'll focus on that rather than playing political games like you know, uh, some uh, prosecutors have done. This race has seen its share of drama. Last month, Calvi accused Behenna of submitting fake documents for one of her clients. In a recent court hearing, a judge cleared Behenna's name, saying there was no reason to accuse her of being involved. Calvi is under investigation by the OSBI for allegedly using public money for his campaign. Calvi says those allegations are not true. Alejandra Briones, KOCO 5 News. So tonight we've covered five of Oklahoma's biggest races, but leading up to Election Day, we've talked with dozens of other candidates across the state, from governor to county commissioner, from the state senate to the state house. KOCO is absolutely committed to letting you hear from the people that you will be choosing from when you vote. And believe it or not, we have interviewed more than 50 candidates already. We have been busy yeah. working to keep you informed. You know, we also talked to each local member of our congressional delegation and the challengers trying to unseat them. Current U.S. Representative Stephanie Bice running for her second term right now in District 5. Joshua Harris Till is her challenger. We asked each, what is the biggest threat to national security? I think the number one threat that we face is China today, and I was incredibly honored to be put on a brand new subcommittee under the House Armed Services Committee that focuses on cyber. You know, the next uh, conflict that we face will not be, in my opinion, on the ground. It'll be a cyber war, a space war, um, and so we need to make sure that we are investing in technology. We need to make sure that we're investing in uh, cybersecurity and also ensuring that China doesn't uh, produce products and try to infiltrate our own network systems to uh, compromise them. And so that focus is incredibly important for me and I'll continue to adv advocate for that in the future. I think the largest threat to national security is a lot of the people that we have representing us in Congress right now. Uh, too many people are focused on their party, they're focused on talking points, they're focused on what makes them look good, they're not focused on what's best for America. Uh, we have people saying America first, but they're not actually putting America first. Our enemies around this world are waiting for America to be vulnerable. We are no more vulnerable than we are when we are divided. And so I think that if we could fix that division, that division will make sure that the largest national security threat that we have, uh, us not being able to work together, is actually removed.